Okay. And it sounds like we are live. Today's show is sponsored by Orbit Gum. When you have the need for gum, pick up a pack of Orbit in your local grocer. Pick up a, uh, preferably, a pack of Orbit from a big pack that's from a Sam's Club or a Costco. Just kidding, not a Sam's Club, because Sam's Clubs are for pussies. And uh, I'm going to be having a meeting pretty soon with Costco for them to become a sponsor of Slop City Podcast. Today's show is sponsored by Costco. Mm -hmm. Use comment code 79 to get a Costco membership for (laughs) $49.95. Uh, it is confusing, but 79 is the age that uh, the Costco CEO's grandfather was when uh, he passed away. It's so. the average age of the customers. It's the mean that age. That is not true. It's the That mean. ain't true, Libby. I'm a statistician. I'm a statistician. I'm just giving you the averages. Just giving me the stats. It's not a, you know, it's science. It's not... Most of the time, I'm not a gum guy, okay? I have this gum because yesterday I did not have any gum or mints. You didn't have any of those very peculiar mints? What What peculiar mints? Altoids? Yeah. How are those peculiar? That's not the word. Is that their logo? They're curiously something. Yeah, curious. They're cautiously optimistic. (laughs) They're They're aggressively clean. Why do they use such weird words on all those? There's a, we have a body wash in our, Rafe and I have a body wash in our shower and it says like, what the fuck does it say? It's like an old, old spice one. And it says like aggressively, sexily clean. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Oh, well, I know what it means, but I don't like it. Hold on. While you're finding it. I will tell the audience that we were just here last night recording, and here we are again today. Libby, you don't have to tell everyone. So, if (laughs) well, I'm telling them because if there's a lack of bits, they'll know that it takes us at least a week. To come up with hot bits. To, to, not to come up with them, but it's sort of like a, in a video game when you're running out of power, and you have to get a little mushroom or something to re-up your... (laughs) Your bit power. Yeah, it's like I'm driving around and I'm driving through coins, driving through little mystery boxes, and tink, I'm getting ready tink, to go to tink. Koopa Troopa land. But we didn't have, we were not able to recuperate our mushrooms last night. We weren't able to recharge. Today, we're both wearing, well, I'm wearing my real glasses and Libby's wearing her reading glasses. We're both, um, how do I say? How do you say in English? Mentally Sexy? ill? <laughs> How do you say uh, very fuckable? How do you say English? we both have messy buns? Um, you can always tell when I'm feeling very good because my lips get so chapped <laughs> that it's coming through the edges. I, it looks like I have more lips right now. So usually people on the street will uh, look at me and say, shut up, you know, lips, bitch. <laughs> Not today. Not today. People are going to walk by and be like, did you have some cranberry juice and leave it on your mouth? Did you have some Kool-Aid? Did you? uh, I wouldn't have red Kool-Aid. I hate to break it to you. Grape? Nope. Those are the only two colors. Or orange. No. Blue raspberry. That's that's not a true color. What do you mean it's not a true color? The true flavors of Kool-Aid. Cherry, grape, orange. That's it. Okay. But yeah, that's like... That, that, but that's a dumb thing to say, okay? Yes. Yeah, what dumb. do you mean it's the true colors? It's just they weren't creative enough yet, and they hadn't found more, more. Um, how do I say? <laughs> how do you say um, exotic? Well, when I flavors, grew up, let me just tell you there were three to four basic flavors, okay? And how do I say? Check your privilege <laughs> when you were able to have. Two flavors mixed in one, a blue raspberry, the blue flavor and the raspberry. He's looking up the flavors. When I was a kid, you were lucky when you had some Kool-Aid. You were even luckier when you had enough sugar to make Kool-Aid. 
Can you go to the history of Kool Aid? Okay, original. There was an original six Kool Aid flavors: cherry, grape, raspberry, strawberry, lemon lime, orange. Guess what? I'm a fan of. If you say lemon lime, I'm taking my headphones <laughs> off and walking out of here. No one liked lemon lime. Not I, as, not a person. <laughs> I was going to say I'm a fan of two of those, raspberry and strawberry. No, strawberry is not a good Kool-Aid flavor. It's Cherry just not. and grape are not yes, good Kool-Aid flavors. Yes, they're so good. Cherry and grape. It, okay, so in my opinion, how do you say? Um, <laughs> how do you say in English? How do you say this in English? Um, cherry and grape are... The laziest, when somebody suggests to me, hey, uh, why don't we do a uh, cherry bomb or a grape bomb? I am immediately turned off by them and their family history, okay? If somebody tosses me a grape soda, I'm not going to take it. Somebody hands me a chip, I'm not going to take it. I don't like it. I don't like the flavors. They taste like cough syrup. Fight me. You like ice cream with a scoop. I like <sighs> ice cream with a pathetic spoon and eating it out of a cup. One, okay. two, here's the deal. Three. I think, and I don't mean this in terms of like a racial thing or anything, <laughs> but I think your roots that are deeply, deeply connected to Russia mm-hmm. have something to do with it. Because let's be honest, in wow. Russia... They wow. hang carpets on the fall, on the wall. Uh huh. How are you going to know a flavor <laughs> that's delicious? How am I going to know a flavor that's delicious? <laughs> Why? Because we have incredible fashion over there. Because there's a picture of me as a little baby sitting with my grandmother, who's dead, by the way. Oh. Newsflash. She died in 2004. My was gran- my twin brother. My- <laughs> he contacted smallpox. He got smallpox. So, by the way, my grandmother is dead. There is a photo of her holding me in my nice little baby outfit, Uh looking all plump and nourished from my mother's tit. And there's a nice carpet behind us (laughs) hanging on the wall. And uh, I I got to see this Can I just clear something up for you? Why don't you look down at the ground? That's carpet. We ain't hanging no shitty ass <laughs> green trailer park fucking trailer it's carpet rug. on the wall. It's a fucking rug. It's an oriental rug. And I know some of you right now are like, you can't say oriental. Well, guess what? You can when it's a rug. That's what I learned. Look, I had. I know that rugs and Kool-Aid don't have anything to do with each other. What I'm trying to say, and I don't know how to say this in English, is <laughs> that you're wrong about strawberry Kool-Aid. Why am I, just because you don't like the wonderful flavor of strawberry in your mouth and you like plain Jane boring flavors, do you like, do you like pubes, huh? Is that? No. I will tell you what, though. <laughs> I've made a lot of Kool-Aid in my life. I've made a lot of money on my pubes. <laughs> when I took. Uh, the medication known as Depakote. What the fuck's that? A very harsh mood stabilizer. What? Is, so what does harsh entail? Harsh means it was... You take it, you, you have to slam your throat. <laughs> no, you take you it and then you're, you're comatose for the next whatever. That's not a mood stabilizer. That's a mood drainer. <laughs> I, I took it oh, and Depakote. then I proceeded to drink entire... What are those things called? Jars. How do you say it in English? <laughs> Jugs. Yeah. Of Kool Aid in Pictures. one sitting because I was so thirsty. Because you were comatose from and it Depakote. was either grape, Ugh. cherry, no. or orange. No. And don't even get me started <laughs> on Flavor Aid. Uh, you go into the shopping store, you can pick up one packet of Kool Aid. You can't get that in Flavor Ride. They got them in those little stupid six packs. So you go, you got that drawer you pull out that has bullshit in it, and it's going to have 75 lemon lime Flavor Aids in it. 
because nobody likes lemon lime. <laughs> Hold on. Flavorade is served in a what? You have to buy it in a pack of multiple? It, yeah, it's like you you know how you could just get one Kool-Aid packet? Yeah. Flavor or flavor right, whatever it's called, flavor aid. Yeah. It is literally flavor aid. I, in my mind, when you said flavor aid, I was like, that's fun. It's like A D E, like they're doing a play off of um, flavor lemonade or something like that. But it just drives me crazy that they <sighs> spelled aid A I D. I don't like that. Is that right? That shows you, yeah, it is. That's upsetting. Yeah, they show all you, of these little packets. No, and the, that just shows you they're a bunch of fucking losers. And the the plastic that on it, uh, that's on it, is very subpar. Wow. So now, not only do you, this is how basic you are. You like cherry, grape, and orange, and you're also criticizing plastic. That's on that. Is yeah. an um, inherently wasteful thing. <laughs> so now you're like, I don't like the plastic. If they're going to put plastic on it, go all the way. Put a very tough plastic. You want it tough. So it'll never biodegrade. You want it to withstand. If you're if you're holding a flavor aid packet, and guess what? Say maybe you. How do you say this in English? Maybe you're not <laughs> privileged enough to have a car, and it's raining outside. You don't have an umbrella that day. You want the fla- you want the plastic to be able to withstand a rainstorm. Yes. Is that what But ideally well, that's reasonable. You shouldn't even purchase it. But maybe you know what? Times get hard and you can't afford sixty seven cents. Look at them. Look at that pathetic little man on their flavor aid. It's a straw man. He's a straw man. It's a paper straw, I'll tell you that. Which leads me to believe this is a case of the straw Oh, there it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. The it straw, looks like a playing card, okay? It's I, a straw you. man fallacy, okay? And when you're doing <laughs> logic, that's one of the things. That's what flavor aid is. What is the definition of a straw man fallacy? Let's look. It's, what I think it is is it's when you have a scarecrow. If you're making fun of some, <laughs> <laughs> it's when you have a scarecrow and you bring it into the courtroom and you say, "Look at this guy! <laughs> look at him! He's a straw man!" Okay, so uh, if you look here, I googled straw man argument, and uh, this is absolutely what we will be using to promote <laughs> this week's episode. That's how it my legs feel. Literally. A- <laughs> That's how they feel. Okay, so um, uh, uh, you guys will see it this day, but to lay it out for you, picture a farm. And, you know, picture a nice big hay bale that's rolled into a circle. Okay. So picture that is the head. And then picture a hay bale that you use at a pumpkin patch that you could sit on. Maybe you could take a picture with your children, Kaylee, Braley, Maylee, and uh, Kaylee. Hunter. And Hunter. Hunter Biden. (laughs) Um, So those, that's the body. That's the the torso of this man. They made a straw man. (laughs) Out of hay bales. <laughs> and his legs are very corpulent. The circular hay bales as well. That's so, how my legs feel. Save this uh, right now. Imagine you're walking around and your legs feel like that. They feel like they each weigh at least 5,000 pounds each. Mm. Couldn't what imagine is the straw man argument? Check it out. That's me. <laughs> that's, that's me and you. We're like hey, holding hands. That's going to be the thumbnail of our next video for this it, video. Mm hmm. And it is also going to be where I put new Slop City episode. <laughs> <laughs> that is so stupid. Okay, so a straw man is a um a straw man is a form of argument and an informal fallacy based on giving the impression of refuting an opponent's argument while actually refuting an argument that was not presented by that opponent. One who engages in this fallacy is said to be attacking a straw man. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> that went right over my head. For Okay, so I'm going to read it one more. T- okay, so I think that it is. Okay, so we need an example. Um, and, you know, this is just for all you peon listeners out there. You know, Libby and I wait are smart. 
I have an idea. Okay. Do you think that Igor understands the straw man fallacy? Dude, yeah, I do. Why don't you give him a call? Okay, let's give him a call. But set a timer on him. He okay. can't sit there and talk are, for 35 what, minutes. <laughs> what are we doing? Calling him for how long? 10 minutes? Yes, 10 or less. Okay, we need him to give us examples too, so that's exactly what we'll do. You set the timer. 10 minutes, I'm calling Igor. How about eight minutes? Okay, let's do eight minutes, and then we'll go over it. I hope he. I hope he. Um, I hope he answers. Oh, come on, Ega. Hey, what's up? Hey, what are you doing? Uh, Mom's watching uh, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Ooh, how the fitting. new season came out. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, what? you've seen it? No, I, I watched some of season one and then not uh, the rest. I, I need to get on it. Women are yeah, funny. Yeah, I'm binge watching it. She's on episode five today already. Nice. I binge watched a show the other day. Which one? Uh, it's called Better Things. Better Things? Yeah, it's on Hulu. About what? What is it about? Um, it's just a, it's this lady, Pamela Adlon. She voiced Bobby Hill and King of the Hill. And, uh... Yeah. She's a uh, actress, has three daughters, and just trying to keep it together with all the hardness and being a parent. Do, do, do you like Hulu or not? Uh, it, it's fine. Okay. There's... Well, send mom your login. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I probably should have told you this when I called you. So we're doing the podcast right now. And, yeah, um, oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're recording it. So we just had a... Um, we yeah, am I going to be featured or not? Uh, you currently are. I am holding. <laughs> oh. I'm holding you up to the microphone. But so listen, we set yeah. a timer so this doesn't go too long because last time we spoke on the podcast, it uh, like fifteen minutes or something. It, yeah, it ran a bit long. And uh, but so yeah, Libby, Libby's here. Say hi, Libby. Hi, Igor. Hey, Libby. What's up? Um. So we just ran into a problem where um we. We're looking up the definition of a straw man argument, and uh, we read the description, and we didn't entirely understand it. So uh, we tossed our chips in and decided to call you. So we wanted to call you and get a definition of a straw man argument from you, and maybe some examples, if if you had some examples, like, you know. Yeah, okay. So straw man is basically a concept which you create uh, in order to combat the uh, perception of uh, uh, typically an illogical construct and, um, you know, to, to uh, co- combat the uh, perception, you know, uh, in any argument uh, with, uh, with your opponent. Okay, so, uh, for example, um, you, you want to uh, kind of create an impression that you, you are arguing something but that's actually not being presented okay, okay? so um well let's say um do an example you know with with me and you or with uh trump or you know whatever whatever comes to mind because we just we want to totally understand this okay so uh, wh- wh- why, why does it have to be uh trump i don't know i, I i'm assuming he does this <laughs> Okay. All right. It doesn't have it to be. be it anything. doesn't have to be Trump. It could be anything. You could be. I mean, this could be any kind of argument. I just, I thought that might be one of the stronger ones, considering mm-hmm. I think he brings up things that nobody presented a lot. I mean, we're arguing about Kool Aid. Yeah. So we're what, how this all started is we started arguing about Kool Aid. Libby and I did, and then we started arguing about Flavor Aid, which is a lesser. Uh, a, a less widely accepted form of Kool-Aid. Well, I guess it's a brand, but it's shitty. And they have a nice little straw man on their packaging. And this is how we got into the straw man <laughs> argument. Okay. Well, uh, let's say, for example, uh, you, you hear people say uh, your, uh, you know, once they come for your, I don't know, for your soda, you know, like there is a... Uh, there was a ordinance in New York City where they stopped selling large sodas, right? You know, once the government, uh, you know, starts controlling your soda, 
they will come and control your guns. They'll come for your guns. Your guns are next. That oh. is a straw man argument. So basically what you're creating, you are creating a, um, a totally unattainable, crazy, uh, you know, argument that ignores the actual position, you know, that c- kind of goes in a totally crazy, distorted way. So whatever oh. position you have, is being distorted, you know, it could be exaggerated, it could be misrepresented, you know, so all, let's say, for example, you know, or you all libs, uh, you, you want to get God out of school, you know, something like that. So that's a straw man, uh, you know, statement, a straw man argument. And then from there, people start, so that you're creating something that does not exist, something that's being misrepresented. Okay. Okay. That's basically it. So, so is, it, um, is it like it's, when, it's intentional misrepresentation? Okay, okay, it, hold on. Is it like when people would say, "If we allow gay marriage, the next thing you know, people will be marrying their dogs"? Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So it's basically it's an intentional, intentional misrepresentation uh, because it, it's it's easier to kind of argue this crazy stuff instead of the actual position that you're holding right so like yeah, somebody so- somebody that's like transphobic they would be like well if we let you know anybody use whatever restroom they want then horses are going to start using the <laughs> restroom is it kind of yeah, like that that's correct yes yeah so uh you know okay. the strong yeah the strongman argument is that it's kind of a it's called a logical fallacy because a, a typical, and you know, actually, uh, strawman fallacies are very well uh, practiced by comedians. You know, you guys, comedians, you, you know, you always create something totally crazy, but you, you create it not with an intention to deliberately, uh, you know, hurt someone or, uh, you know, deliberately um, misrepresent something. Uh, it, it's to underline the, you know, the comedic value of it. But, uh, you know, the straw man fallacy is normally used uh, in a lot in politics, you know, a lot in, um, you know, in arguing, you know, religious positions and, and stuff like that. Right. But in, 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 in a normal life, no, people don't really use them unless there is some intention to deliberately uh, misrepresented, uh, you know, somebody's position to um, make you feel stupid, to make you feel, uh, you know, to to maybe, you know, have other people kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, that's right. Give it to them, you know, kind of oh. a tribe mentality. Gotcha. So like every man I've ever met. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You can say, yeah, you know, every man is an asshole. Yeah. OK, well. Yeah, kind of. That's a really interesting straw man argument. Okay, well, we know that every man that you met is an asshole, but it doesn't mean that every man is an asshole. Yeah, I gotcha. All right, right. cool. Libby, how you feel? You feel like you understand? I I appreciate. I knew that you would know. I knew it. (laughs) All right. Good deals. All right. Good deal. Cool. Did, did the clock run out already? Okay. It's got seven seconds left. It's got, it's got seven seconds. We wrapped it up pretty nicely. What do you got on the agenda for the rest of the day? I don't know. I woke up at uh, four o'clock today. So uh, I'm kind of. You right. woke up I at four to... o'clock? Yeah, I've been waking up at four. I go to the gym and, and run and do some exercises. And then by eight o'clock, I'm done with all the shit and doing business, you know? Oh, wow. So you're working out for four hours straight? No, no, no. I, yeah, you wake up at four. But by the time you get to the gym and, you know, stretch and run for 35, 45 minutes. Ooh, then so, kinda... so you're stretching for an hour. No, I stretch for about five, five minutes and then run and then I do upper body. Yeah. Wow. Dude. That's, that's right. great. How much are anyway. you bench pressing at this point? I don't. I, I only use uh, my body weight and uh, just the weight machines. I don't use my legs because my legs get enough workout from biking, elliptical, and the uh, running. So I don't really do legs. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're look. You're looking pretty cut. Looking pretty <laughs> cut. So good for you. All right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Tell Svet right. I said hello. 
All right, sounds good. All right, good deal. Thank uh, you. So next time you want to call for any, uh, you know, uh, interpretations, you know, text me better. Make sure I'm available. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I just would have, if you didn't answer, I just would have uh, hung up the phone. <laughs> I got you. All okay. Right, good deal. I'll, te- Bye. I'll text you next time. Okay, bye. Uh, bye, see ya. Don't text him next time. I will not, absolutely not text him I next like time. I like the element of surprise. Me too. <laughs> I like that he's like... <laughs> For example. He just got right into it. He he didn't waver. He was just like, okay, basically what it is is... <laughs> <laughs> I took that class in, in uh, community college logic. and Me uh, too. Sure didn't remember that. I have the books. I have like an Emmanuel Kant <laughs> book. Which definitely sounds like Emmanuel Kant, uh, if you ask me. <laughs> That's a straw man fallacy, though. Bye. <laughs> I just realized. I that- just can't wait to start saying it to everybody at McDonald's. They're like, yeah, you know, our shake machine's out or whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, shake machine's out. Next thing you know, the soda machine will be out. Uh huh. Next thing you know, we'll be drinking out of tarlets because we ain't got no ice cream. <laughs> I I guess I use it a lot because I do say all men are assholes and I mean it. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not even generalizing. I'm just. I mean it. So I need to look within myself and maybe maybe dial back on the straw man fallacies a little bit. Well, maybe what I would uh, suggest doing is uh, uh, making your own straw man and just kind of <laughs> looking and inward, caressing him. <laughs> yeah, exploring my straw man's body. So I mean. We could buy potentially a thousand straws on Amazon. I know that may not be a popular, um, popular thing. People might be upset. Hey, why is it be buying all these straws? And then you could say, "Well, Flavor Aid's making terrible, shitty plastic covers." So, mm-hmm. so who's the real asshole? Libby's going to be making a straw man, caressing his body, <laughs> getting back in touch with her roots, and uh, getting. <laughs> she's going to be getting back. Back to the basics, caressing I, his body, exploring it, looking at each and every. And the cool part is the genitals is what you don't like. Guess what? Your straw man don't have to have genitals. It's but not like you have to put, you don't have to, what if you made this whole straw man and he was like six feet tall and then you put a little smoky in the middle. No, just one between straw. Between his legs. Yeah, I was just thinking of an actual meat item. But if it's or you if, put a hot dog, if it's paper straw, it won't last long with me because <laughs> I'm so wet. <laughs> you make gross. You make n- ten straws together for his dingus. <laughs> Libby, what are you doing? I'm jerking off my <laughs> straw man. Oh man, straw man. In your in my blood. Hey, I was I was singing Spoon Man, but uh, uh, I was putting S- straw in Straw it. Man. Yeah. Is that um, Soundgarden? I oh, think okay. so. It is. How come Randy doesn't know? He's a... Are you alive? I nodded my head, yes. He's like this. <laughs> <laughs> are you stoned to the bone? <laughs> Uh, no. If he tokes, he pokes. <laughs> yes, on both. <laughs> what does poke mean? Poke on Facebook? Poke your dingus into somebody's body. <laughs> oh. Poke he your tokes, straw. If he tokes, he pokes. He's Randy's <laughs> just sitting at home on Facebook sending out pokes to people he hasn't seen in a while. <laughs> He's toking and poking. Mm. Moral of the story is. If you were in, let's say if you were in third grade and you were writing a paper, an exposition, Mm -hmm. your last paragraph would say something like, in conclusion, don't, this is what you would have written. In conclusion, comma, don't drink lemon lime Kool-Aid. That's all it would say. And you'd be done with your, your story and you turn it in. Sure. Or a, uh, more critical thinker child. (laughs) would have been which like, I wasn't in conclusion don't drink the Kool-Aid or should I say flavor aid because that's what Jim Jones actually used and because he's a hack loser and the teacher would have got it but the other kids wouldn't have 
The other kids would have said, what do you mean don't drink the Kool-Aid? What are we supposed to drink? Well, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. That's all my mom made. Have you ever put your hand inside of the Kool-Aid jug to stir it? Done it. <clears throat> Times were tough when I was a kid. Sometimes you didn't have a clean spoon. Yeah. <laughs> you had to put your whole hand in Sometimes there. you just put a bunch of hairspray on your hair and you, you get it real hard and you stir. You put your hair in the Kool-Aid jug and you just stir it with the, all your L.A. gear gel. <laughs> All your fucking gel and you just stir that baby up. Do you tell your family that's how you made it? No, because you're like eight years old and you just wanted some Kool-Aid. Mm-mm. You don't tell them you put your entire arm <laughs> inside of the jug. and went. <laughs> you're like touching the sugar crystals, <laughs> making sure it's all Then you have a purple in. hand. Mm-hmm. Your mom's like, why is that purple? You're like, I... It's bruised, mom. <laughs> Maybe if you didn't work so much, I wouldn't get a bruised arm, Mom. Mom, it's bruised because I put my fucking hand <laughs> in the Kool-Aid. Have you? Ever, I had to borrow sugar from somebody one time. You used to borrow sugar all the time. If somebody knocked on my door today and asked me for sugar, I would go to Walmart, buy a gun, and I could do it very quickly <laughs> because that's the problem with this country. <laughs> and I would wait for them to come back. And that's, I would, I would greet them with that. If, how would you feel if somebody knocked on you? If somebody knocked on my door today and asked me for sugar, I would be like, what is this some kind of scam you're running? Is you joke? trying to rob me? They just want to get in your out in your house and overtake you. Uh, <laughs> overtake you. <laughs> Back in the day though. That's the word that you use for a robber. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. He's going to come in and overtake you. Overtake could mean rob you, rape you, uh, kiss you. I mean, there's a lot of things. Tina, back in the day, my mom would send the kids over to the neighbor's house. I would do it too. Can we got a? You'd take the measuring cup. Can we get a cup of sugar? And they would give it to you. And also, sugar uh, is so incredibly cheap. I can't even. I can't believe how cheap it is. So I'm like, what are at this point? If somebody's coming to my house asking for sugar, I'm going to be like, dude, it's a do- go to Dollar Tree. It's a dollar there. I think it's that you're in the middle of making your Kool-Aid. And you, you've already poured the purple stuff in there. You okay. poured the water. Stirred it with your arm. Stirred it with, yeah. And you're like, I don't have sugar. Yeah. So it's like a convenience thing. Oh, I yeah. I can't believe that people used to do that and no one does it anymore. No, because people are crazy because people are going to overtake you. My burp just sounded like the beginning of that fart that sounds like a little motor. Can we start a revolution? This is how we get the world to mend. You know what Donald Trump should use for his uh, campaign if he really wants to? uh, This Because I envision he talks about things like this. I could imagine him being like, you know, kids used to be going to houses asking for sugar. We need to be doing that again, and that that would make America great again. Get let's get to the point let's where not, we can knock on somebody's door. Let's not and give ask them Donald sugar. Trump credit for what we just came up with, though. We just came up with a way to save the world, and not only sugar. Sometimes you need a quarter cup of butter. So what are you actually? What are you actually proposing right now? I'm proposing you want you want this back. You want to yes. be able to go if we know who our neighbors are, we can be more loving. I don't know who the fuck my neighbors are besides the guy on the left and the guy on the right. If we know our neighbors, we can steal what we can from do. them. <laughs> <laughs> we can case their houses. We can take advantage and take of them. Cont- and we can take over their bodies i'm gonna be honest those junkies that uh live next door to me today uh, do you want to know why i was 10 minutes late today because i was walking out and they were having a full-blown yard sale (laughs) i mean every single item they are selling it everything's out and then all of a sudden i hear this young buck screaming at this old man they live together can't figure out their dynamic don't know if it's daughter or uh, (laughs) don't know if it's son father uh couple or i can't figure it out 
but they were screaming at each other at the top of their life. I mean, it was one of them was screaming very loudly. The other was talking very quietly. So I was uh, filling in the blanks of what they were arguing about by listening to what the man yelling was saying. He was like, you're my fucking issue. I mean, they're full blown screaming. I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to know those neighbors. Okay. I don't want to know anything about them. And I'm hoping that they were selling all of their shit so that they get the fuck out of my neighborhood. (laughs) Cause I, yeah, I am campaigning for somebody to leave the neighborhood. All right. I like everybody. I don't like them. Since these mofos moved in, we found needles on our street. That's a straw man fallacy. Is it? I don't know. Just because a junkie moves in. Oh, what's the next thing we're going to find? Needles on the ground. What's the next thing I'm going to find? A needle in my butt. I go over there to borrow half a cup of sugar. Next thing you know, I got a half a cup of cocaine. (laughs) And I'm high as fuck. <laughs> and I'm selling it at a yard sale. And I'm zooming around my house. Don't know why it's so clean. <laughs> and I should thank the man. But instead, I'm making fun of him. What kind of America is that? Instead, I don't have any fucking Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> instead, I'm so high and stony bony. <laughs> I'm stoned to the bone that I'm drinking Kool-Aid with no sugar. What kind of what kind of I'm world is that? Stirring it with my whole leg. <laughs> I put it in the bathtub, put a towel in to plug it, and I stirred it with my foot. <laughs> oh shit! Oh. Uh, so, are you telling me if those people came over to borrow a cup of sugar, you wouldn't give it to them? Well, I'm just telling you that I would be uncomfortable no matter what. So you'd shut the door and wouldn't let them come in. Okay, so did I tell you, so there's, uh, okay, in my little nook I have, to my left, I got Barb. Good old Barb drives a purple PT Cruiser. She has absolutely hit my car (laughs) and Rafe's car before. But she's an elderly woman and she's got a couple cats. Rafe helped her with her dead dog. Remember I told you? He had to go. She came to our door and was like, Somebody poisoned my dog. And that was, you know, she's old. And she was so sad and thought someone poisoned her dog. But he was just old and sick. So Rafe went over. I mean, so I'm just telling you, we get neighbor points already. She uh, came Mm -hmm. over and showed us a newspaper article with us in it. It was like Rafe was in it. And she goes, I didn't know I was living next door to famous comedians. (laughs) She goes, because Tina... I'm going to be honest with you. When you told me you did comedy, I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I was like, God damn, dude. This fucking old lady's fucking sizzling me. Barb I get sizzled you. I get enough heat from my family. We get enough heat from everybody talking shit, being like, oh, yeah, you're a comedian. Didn't know it was going to be a lady that's on fucking Medicare. <laughs> oh, man. She brought the art. She cut it out. Yeah. She Old brought it over. people love cutting out articles. Oh, man, they love it. And after Rafe helped her uh, with the dog, she came and left something on our front porch. And I'm not fucking kidding you. It was just a plastic bag full of magazines from the last 15 years. <laughs> and that was her way of saying oh. thank you. Can she I gave have us those a little, magazines? She gave us a little card. I think I put them in the recycling. Maybe you could have made some collages. This was like a year plus ago. Wow. But I'm you, telling you. You didn't think forward about collaging. No, of course not. I think there was a highlights book in there. I'm like, should have kept that. Doofus and Gallant, you could have made a great collage out of that. Definitely should have kept that. But yeah, I mean, so that's who lives to my left, Barb. And I mean, you know, I help her carry in her groceries and stuff sometimes. And she's got this cat. What does she call it? Tony. Tony the tiger. He's an outdoor cat, but now he's an indoor cat. She uh, nursed him back to health. And he hangs around outside. She's got one of those uh, stray straw man, stray cat <laughs> uh, boxes on her porch. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where there, it's like to, storage for thing. feral cats or something. It's like a storage box. Yeah. They make it into a cat house. Yes. So she's got that on her front porch. Very nice woman. Um, oh, God. That's so cute. Yeah. But she did fucking burn me good. <laughs> 
I just couldn't believe it. She What article was that? It was a uh, so I had one article. She saw me on TV, but the article that she cut and pasted was about Rafe. I think it was when his album like that he was getting ready to record his album. Mm. <laughs> I saw you on TV. Yeah, she told me she saw me on TV and I just I love that she burned me like that. <laughs> you know, I didn't know. I thought I was like sure you do. <laughs> like Oh no. Hey, you know them groceries, Barb? You're going to be carrying them up by yourself now, bitch. Yep. Out of your purple PT cruiser. You should hook her up with Donald. Oh, my God. She would hate him because she's liberal and he <laughs> is too prog- He's uh, too conservative. Listen, Barb, I will eat your pussy and your pussies. <laughs> Get it? Your cats? And she would be like, Get out of my city. And he'd go sleep inside the feral cat box until she wanted him. Mm. He'd be like, I lost my tooth. <laughs> Donald, you, you can have my teeth. I, I mean, he's, and we asked him to make sure, we asked Donald to make sure, like, hey, you know you're missing a tooth, right, man? <laughs> oh, no! But, well... You better we, leave that man alone. <laughs> one of the uh, waitresses at this joint... um Asked him secretly. She whispered in his ear and asked him, "Hey, oh, do you know you're missing a tooth? Do you know I want to?" Fuck and he you was Donald? like, "And the, he, the funniest part is, she was trying to be really secretive, and he like loudly exclaims, oh, yeah, no, I lost a fell out, but I'm getting a new one. <laughs> I'm getting a new one next week. <laughs> is it right in the front? Um, yeah. Oh, it's literally one of his front teeth." <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> yeah. Donald needs me. I bet he's up there right now. Okay. You could go up there. Go in there. And be I like, can't go up there unless you're I've there. I've heard a lot about you. Yeah. I don't want to do that and be like, what are you talking about? Oh, you're looking good today. That's exactly what he would I'd be do. like, sir, take a look at me. He'd be and like. And then say it again like you mean it. <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, I guess you're really not looking no, he, if you wore that leopard print shirt in with your fucking big ass long titties, oh man, I'm telling you, he'd fucking come all over the place. Would he come all over my titties? No, it'd probably be in his, in his whitey tighties. You know he wears whitey tighties. You think that man's wearing boxer briefs? Yeah, right. That man's got doo-doo stains on his undies. <laughs> oh, shit. Doo-doo stains, doo-doo stains. Give me some of them Donald doo-doo I'm telling stains. you, though, if, like, there's just no way. I would I would be uncomfortable if somebody knocked on my door and asked for sugar. There was one time I was driving in the middle of the night, and I was in a not-so-great area near my home, because <laughs> whatever. But I, it, uh-huh. it, was, it wasn't, no, it wasn't near my home. It was actually near, like, the brewery in St. Louis, and... I was driving home from work and uh, my, another job I had years ago. And there was a woman in the middle of the street. Like when she saw my car pull up, she was over to the right. She ran out in the middle of the street with a stroller, but there wasn't a baby in it. And I was like, I think she's trying to run some kind of scam on me. <laughs> and I didn't stop and ask her if she needed help or anything. And I should have, but I was like, I didn't see a baby in the stroller. I think she was just hoping that I would stop. Oh, I remember that. That was that lady that her baby got kidnapped and she stood oh. in the middle of the street. <laughs> Nobody helped her. Yeah. Sadly, her baby was never found. Mm. I got my baby here in the stroller. He can't see him because he's a ghost baby. Wow. That was a very good that whatever voice that was, I want to hear more. That of was that. a grandpa. That was very good. You better get off my goddamn lawn, you little <laughs> sons of bitches. Get off of my lawn. You guys are looking <laughs> great today. That's one of uh when I do that, Marcy loves that she always tells me to do the get off my lawn. Hey you kids, you better get off of my lawn. <laughs> Don't you step one <laughs> little foot on my lawn. Don't you see that sign there that says no walking on the grass? I drew it myself. 
Mister, it doesn't say anything about the grass. It's just a bunch of scribbles. It just says, I hate women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Mister, that sign says Ronald Reagan for president. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he your president in that? <laughs> Uh, Where am I? No. <laughs> am I okay? <laughs> no, mister. He's not our president. He's not. Well, you who's know, the president? Bernie Sanders. Bernie who? Bernie Sanders. I he mean, looks he's... like Larry David. Ever heard of him? Um, mister, are you okay? You're turning into a piece of space. <laughs> get up. Sir, your sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you're fading away like in the Avengers movies. Oh, you're getting all pixelated. Oh, Where did he go? Mom, he's gone. I'm in this stroller over <laughs> here. <laughs> he's a baby, but he talks like that. <laughs> Why is that baby talking you like an old man? <laughs> he shows up finally. <laughs> The case is cracked. <laughs> yeah, Tina, you could have saved that old man baby, but oh, you just Oh, my didn't. fucking God. Can I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> no, mister, I don't have any sugar. Get off of my lawn. But I've got He shows this. up with no underwear on. <laughs> I'm on my own. I'm on my own lawn. Get off. Hey, myself, get off of my lawn. No, mister, you're shooting hoops in my driveway with no underwear on. Your dingus is swinging around and you're shooting threes like nobody's business. I always love playing basketball. He's across the street <laughs> shooting threes into their fucking... He's at the edge of their lawn shooting threes, Swoosh, and everyone's like, "Motherfuckers, <laughs> <laughs> sir, you're a really good basketball player." That's you, right. I love been playing basketball for years. And also, your winky is huge. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <gasps> Uh, Sir, uh, a piece of your uh, lung just fell onto the driveway. Who Are needs you okay? lungs? <laughs> Mister. Have you ever seen Air Bud? <laughs> <laughs> Mister, I have a golden retriever inside of my house right now. Let me bring it out. <laughs> the dog runs out <laughs> and then grabs onto his t- <laughs> dick. Hey, get this goddamn dog off my my penile! Chad, Chad, stop! He's eating the old oh, man's wink. He's licking the old man's winky. Oh, oh! You named your dog Chad? That's <laughs> lame as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Mom, he's coming. (laughs) Come here, dog. No. (laughs) I'm sorry I said that. I I didn't want to come on the dog. (laughs) I just wanted to come on something furry, like a fur burger. (laughs) Show me a fur (laughs) burger. Mister, what's a fur burger? Can I borrow a half a cup of fur burger? (laughs) Basically, it's a woman's Mons Vernus with a pound of hair on it. Ooh, it's a woman's what? Mons Vernus! Mount Vernon? Swish! <laughs> it's a Mons... It's the mound of pubical hair. Get off my pubical hair. <laughs> you goddamn kids. Sir... You just did a backflip. <laughs> Kobe Bryant, you motherfuckers. They say white men can't jump. Watch this. <laughs> oh, my God, sir. I'm going to record this and send it to the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> <laughs> the Harlem Globetrotters song starts playing. What is it? I, I don't know, but it's funny. 
<laughs> Can't we play like a few seconds of it? I guess so, because my throat hurts. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, let's watch me. Alright, I'm gonna dribble between my legs here. Oh god, I hit my ball with the ball. <laughs> Was that it? Yeah, kind of. Oh my god. <laughs> Harlem Globetrotters ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> the theme tune, kids. Oh, there it is. Hey, kids, come listen to my new ringtone. Check it out. I'm getting so much pussy. <laughs> I got one of them cr- cricket phones. Is that what it is? Jitter. It's, uh, Jitterbug. Miss, mister, it's a jitterbug. Excuse me. The kid becomes his agent. <laughs> I have Excuse me, phone. ma'am. No pictures right now. Oh, somebody wants a picture with me. Yes, mister, but... <laughs> But we can't do it right now, okay? We have a game coming up soon. We need to get you ready. But look how erect my penile is. <laughs> I was just going to say there's a fluffer <laughs> making his dick all hard. Oh, it's so erect. It has an erect like Mister, this. Mister, you've got to put it away. I can't. I'm going to put on my cut-off jean shorts and let it hang out of the bottom. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of something this guy down the street used to do when I was a kid. He probably did it on purpose, because I used to. Can I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> okay, hold on a minute. He uh. comes and <laughs> dust comes out. Here you go. <laughs> Might not be as sweet as you're used to, but you look like you don't need any more caloric intake. So, sir, um, mister, I guess that's your name. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here on uh, KMBC Nine hey, news uh, in the morning. Hey, okay. Am I allowed to curse? <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to curse or not? You know what? Yeah, why the fuck not? <laughs> so we just have, uh, you know, we just kind of want to know what it's like uh-huh. to be. How old are you again? 175 years old. <laughs> no way. That is so I'm wild. I'm actually just 90. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so uh, we just want to, what has it been like to be inducted into the Harlem Globetrotters? I it's... mean, that is, you are the oldest motherfucker ever to do so. That is so crazy. Not only am I oldest, but I got the biggest ball. <laughs> okay, we need to cut this short. He's uh, turning into a gargoyle. <laughs> you are today's me. show sponsored by a half a cup of sugar. <laughs> Get a half a cup of sugar from your fucking neighbor by using the code uh, Vons Mernis. <laughs> Vons? Are you saying Vons? I did. I said it wrong. It's Vons Mernis, but it's funnier if you say Vons Mernis. It's Vons Mernis. Vons Mernis. Mons Vernis. Obviously, you never had any pussy, ma'am. <laughs> no. I haven't. Sir, we need you to get the fuck out of this office. Well, the next thing you know, you're going to tell me, yeah, yeah. What? Where am I? Mister, get over here. Why are you doing this? Oh, where am I? Mister, put your dinghy away. I just had a, f- a full on uh, daydream vision that I was on a talk show program. Mister, you're in the hospital. Uh, you uh, did six backflips in a row, and they were going really well, and on the last one, you crashed. Where's the nurse? <laughs> I want her to wear one of those little nurse outfits, and I'm going to stick my hand up her skirt and give her a little <laughs> <laughs> on her. <laughs> Mister, they don't wear nurse outfits like that anymore. This isn't One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Wait, oh, oh, it's not, oh, God. You get a, ma- <gasps> a male nurse comes in, and he's very upset. 
Oh, who's this guy? Come over. Oh, I guess I'll just tickle your ball. S- uh, sir. <laughs> Come closer, sir. I can barely breathe. Come a little closer. Okay, sir, you don't have to do just this. Just a little closer. I okay. got to tell you a secret. Okay, what's the secret? Oh, I tickled your balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. Why am I laughing? It's so inappropriate. <laughs> hey, guys. Mister just tickled my balls. Get a load of this. Uh-oh. I think I need to have one of those things put in my dick so I can pee. What's it called? <laughs> a catheter. A catheter! Another nurse comes in, and the mister is spinning the male nurse <laughs> by his balls on his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, excuse me, can you put a catheter in? I have to go pee real bad. Oh, sir, we don't, We you actually don't need a catheter. I do, just please, <laughs> put, put it in. Well, I mean, sir. Just we, put it in, <laughs> I gotta go pee. Okay, uh, I mean, but I just, we you, you really don't need a catheter. Just put so. it in. No, I mean, it's genuinely oh, yeah. not put necessary. Oh, yeah, oh, oh my god. yeah, oh, sir, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you, yeah. You soiled oh, yeah. your bed sheets. Oh, that ain't piss. That's gum. Why is it red? <laughs> what? <laughs> I think this is the end of me. I never came blood before. Kool-Aid man or flavor-aid <laughs> straw man kicks in the fucking door. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, I never in my life. Hi, I'm the straw man, and I'm taking Mr. with me. No. Let's go. Oh, I'm a Kool-Aid man. <laughs> Not today, motherfucker. <laughs> swoosh, swoosh with your arm making flavor aid. Help! Let's go. And straw see. man whisks him away. <laughs> you motherfuckers are said to get all of my love. <laughs> The straw man's shooting through the air and has a hot dog as a penis. <laughs> Let me tickle your penis, straw man! <laughs> Take a bite. It's a hot dog! <laughs> and scene. What the fuck just happened? So fucking funny. I smoked two marijuana cigarettes and things just went off the rails. I love that we're like, oh, we're tired. We're not going to have enough bits <laughs> this episode. <laughs> We just did a whole bit about an old man. Very jam-packed. And a fucking straw man. Mister, why? You're so good at shooting threes. He opens the window from his house and is shooting them (laughs) into the kid's fucking basketball. Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm so tired now. To be honest, I don't think uh, there's going to be anything else on this episode. (laughs) I think we just uh, blew our load. We we blew our load. Oh, my God. So I, fucking He funny. gave us a light like 30 minutes ago anyway. No, I didn't. It just felt like we were just going, <laughs> rocking and rolling. Hey, honey. <laughs> hey, honey. How long have we been doing this? Hey, kitty. You never even woke up that whole time. Why would he? He's well, if I heard a power. story about an old man fucking shooting hoops, I'd wake up. <sighs> I'm not a good whistler. <clears throat> what a time. You know, it's uh, almost Christmas time, so we do need to be thinking about doing some kind of Christmas-themed uh, episode or there talking about the holidays. that celebrate other things besides Christmas. Okay, I just mean the Santa part, not the fucking God part. Maybe we should have this Santa Claus come in and we can interview him. Interview him? <laughs> I think that you and I should go get pictures uh, sitting on a Santa's lap. Hey, that big old gal ain't going to sit on my lap, is Happy she? Happy holidays from Slop City Podcast. You, Us and a mall Santa. <laughs> you walk up to get your picture and he's like, oh yeah, look at her coming. And then I'm like, hey Santa, hold on a minute. Hey Santa. Hey Santa, don't get so excited. And he's like, Oh, God, is that big old gal coming over here, too? <laughs> You're going to smash me like a pancake. We better do it soon because the lines get ridiculous. We Well, because everybody <laughs> thinks they're going to do it at the last minute, and then the lines get wild. So, yeah, we need to. what I would suggest is we need to show up very early, get a we, nice breakfast. 
we could do it. And then when we go to sit on his lap, we go, oh, Santa, oi, oi. And we start bouncing. Each of us bounce on one of his legs. And we're like, oh, 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 bounce that ass on Santa. I am 100% going to sit down and be like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> in the oh, middle, Santa. Oh, Santa. In the middle of all these children. I'm going to sit down and be like, Santa, 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 Santa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to be like, all I want for Christmas. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Then I take off my pants and turn around and ride him, like riding <laughs> you him. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, Sandy, 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 Sandy. You take off your pants and you just. You take your hand and you just. <laughs> vigorously rubbing your, your pussy. <laughs> And you're like, holy shit, this went off the rails. And then everybody in the whole mall gets quiet. <laughs> there's Even Santa's there's just thousands, sitting there like... There's thousands of people and parents and everyone's <laughs> looking at you and you're rubbing your pussy. People from Starbucks upstairs are coming down to look. <laughs> and everyone's like, that ass. what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Children are crying, but not actually making any sounds. <laughs> They're just like... What's happening? What's going? What's happening to Santa? And then I stop and look What's around and I'm like, oh shit. And I just like brush off my shirt, <clears throat> put my sweater together, and just politely walk away. And then some guy breaks the tension by going, that's a huge bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big old bitch <laughs> from Deuce <and> Bigelow. <laughs> Santa faints. Oh, fuck. Yeah, we should get Christmas uh, photos done. <laughs> Guys, this has been a very uh, ridiculous episode. Thanks for listening to Slap City Podcast. Oh, it hurts <sighs> from laughing. Um, Again, we will be in uh, Kansas City on January 4th. Get your tickets. Get your tickets now. Get your tickets. Get your tickets now. Uh, if you now. can uh, get your tickets, get your tickets now. And uh, also... <laughs> Donate to our Patreon. How do they find it, though? They just go to patreon.com and they (laughs) type in Slop City. (laughs) And remember, if you want to find Patreon, you got to go to WWE email, type in bing.com. Then then when you get in Bing, you have to type in Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm wwslopcityemail.com. And that should work. And, uh, yeah, that should just about do it. So, guys, again, thank you so much for listening to Slop City Podcast. We love you so much. And, um... All right, are we ready to start recording, Randy? Yes, we are. <laughs> I think I'm warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. We love you guys. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.